Hello, everyone. It is Friday morning, September, what is today? My days are all running together right now. September 4th. And I am going to uh, post two videos. I am going to do a first video here where I go over the homework from section 6.4. Uh, that is the homework on variation. I'm going to work out every single problem. And then I will post a second video where I do the lecture on section 6.6. .6. I do apologize for canceling class yesterday. Um, in full transparency, as I told you, my wife had surgery on Wednesday and it went well, but uh, she's in a lot of pain and uh, I needed to uh, be available to help her out uh, the day after surgery. So we will have class on Tuesday next week and um, we will move on after 6.6. .6. So it's really important that you watch the second video that I'm gonna to post today over section 6.6 .6 because I'm going to go over the material and explain it. And then we'll kind of have a catch up session on Tuesday where I go over any questions that anybody has. All right, so um, I am going to work out these problems on my iPad as I have done in the past. And so for those of you who have your books um, and that needs to be most of you at this point. You really do need to be uh, uh, getting your textbook. We're getting ready to start the third week and it's pretty important that you have that book so that you can uh, follow along. All that to say that we are on pages 318 and 319 in the textbook. I will um, read off the problem and I will write it out and show it to you. I'm going to share my screen and uh, I've got my iPad all ready to go so that we can work out uh, the first group of problems. So again, um, page 318, problem number 23. Now it says this, it says y varies directly as x. So the keywords there are uh, varies directly. So we know it's a direct variation. We know the variables are y and x and the letter y comes first. So y varies directly as x is going to look like this to start with, okay? And then it says, determine y when x equals 12. So they tell us that x equals 12 and k equals 9. Whoops, sorry about that. k equals 9. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward situation here. We're simply going to plug the 12 and the 9 in for k and x. So y equals k is 9 times x is 12 and 9 times 12 is 108. So our answer is y equals 108. Pretty straightforward multiplication, just to kind of get you started there. All right. Most of you probably had no problem with that. Problem number 25 says m, m varies inversely as the square of n. So we have an inverse variation. You got to look at that word. Inverse variation means it's going to be a fraction. The first letter is m. So m equals, and then on the right side of the equal sign, we always have a k, and then it's a fraction because it varies inversely. So it's k over the square of n. So that's going to be n to the second power, all right? And they tell us that n equals 10 and k equals 20. So we're gonna plug those values in. So M is going to equal 20 over 10 squared, which is 20 over 100, which is 1 fifth or 0 0.2. Either of these answers is acceptable. If you prefer to do it on your calculator and you write it as a decimal, that's perfectly fine. If you want to uh, leave it as a fraction, it needs to be in simplest form. If you leave it as 20 over 100, that's not simplified and you would lose a point for not simplifying your problem. All right. And then problem number 27 says A, oh, now this has two variations in here. Let's read it carefully. It says A varies directly as B and inversely as C. So A is the first variable. Now, we're always going to have a K on the right side and it's varying directly as B, so it's going to be K, B, and then it says, and inversely as C, so that's going to be over C. So there's our setup. And they want us to find A, 
they tell us that B equals five, C equals 10, and K equals five. So we're going to plug those values into our equation. So A is going to equal, let me move it up a little bit, K is five times B is five divided by C, which is 10. And of course that's 25 over 10. And again, you can write this one of, actually you can write this one of a few different ways. When you simplify it to lowest fractions, it's going to be five over two. You might also choose to write that as 2.5. You could also write it as a mixed number, two and a half. Any of those three solutions is acceptable. Okay, I generally prefer to leave it either as a fraction uh, in simplest form or a decimal, but if you wanted to write it as two and a half with a mixed number, perfectly fine, nothing wrong with it. Um, you wouldn't lose any points for it because it's not wrong. Anyway, so that's problem number 27. Now, since I'm doing a video, um, you guys can go back and check the work that I just did. So if you need to see it or if you need to, to slow it down. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next problem, which is number 35. Problem number 35 says that J varies directly as the square root of B. Okay, this is interesting. We didn't talk about something like this, but it's not hard. So J comes first and it varies directly. So that's gonna be a multiplication. We always have a K times what? The square root of B, not the square of B. It's not B squared, it's the square root of B like that. This is probably one that some of you had some questions about and I'm willing to bet that that was the error you might have made if you had trouble with it, is that you did B squared instead of the square root of B. Perfectly understandable. Then what does it say? It says if J equals two, when B equals 36, so that's given, find, so this stuff, is given, then we need to find J, determine J, J equals what? When B equals 81. Now I didn't leave myself enough room here, so I am going to erase so that I have enough space. And we're going to go ahead and look at this problem all on a page by itself. So the first thing that we need to understand is that we don't know what K is. We have to find K. But we know what J and B are. It says J equals two. We don't know K. But it says when B equals 36. So this isn't too bad, okay? So that's two equals K times six. Square root of 36 is six. And remember, square root means what number can you multiply times itself in order to get that number. So six times six is 36. And then I'm going to divide both sides by six. And that's going to give me K equals two sixths, which is one third. Now I will tell you that one third is a repeating decimal. So I encourage you to write it as a fraction rather than as 0.3333333. Because if you do the 0 0.3 repeating, it's going to introduce a small margin of error. Now, if you use the decimal, I'm not gonna count it wrong, but it's probably easier if you use the fraction whenever you have a situation like that. Okay, so now they want us to find out what J equals. We know that the formula is going to be J equals K times the square root of B. Okay, we know that K is one third and B is 81. So this is going to be J equals one third times the square root of 81. And of course, the square root of 81, we ask ourselves, what can I multiply times itself to get 81? And of course, the answer is nine. So the answer is that j equals one third times nine. And when you multiply that out, and many of you can do that in your head, but just in case you can't, I'll put in an intermediate step. One third times nine would be nine thirds. And of course, nine thirds equals three. So our answer to this would be that j equals three. Okay. I was gonna ask if there's any questions, but obviously you're watching the video. So um, again, the biggest uh, issue that you might've had on this problem was that square root of B. So be careful about that. All right, that was problem number 35. We're gonna do another one. 
And the next one is problem number 39. Okay, so let me get that ready here. I'm starting to get a little more comfortable doing this. So it's going a little quicker. All right, problem number 39 says F varies jointly as M1 and M2. Now remember, a joint variation means that it's a direct variation, but there's more than just a single variable. So it's going to be that multiplication, direct variation is multiplication. So it's going to be F equals, there's always a K times M1 times M2. And it says, and inversely as the square of D. So all of that will be divided by the square of D, not the square root, the square. The square means to the second power, okay? Now I know there's a lot of uh, letters here and there's a lot of numbers, but it's just a matter of plug in and, uh, in math we call it plug and chug. We plug in our answers and we chug out an answer, um, a solution. So what do they tell us? They tell us that when F equals 20, M1 is five, M2 is 10, and D equals 0 0.2. So this is the stuff that is given. Okay, so we're going to plug that stuff in and we're going to use all that information to find the letter K. So I'm going to move it over here a little bit to the left side of the screen. So 20 is my F equals K times M1 times M2 divided by I'm going to use parentheses here just because it's a decimal number and I want you to remember that we're squaring the whole thing. D squared. Okay, so this is 20 equals 5 times 10 is 50 times K, so that's 50K over 0 0.2 times 0 0.2. And when you multiply that out, be careful of your decimals, it's 0 0.04. Now I'm going to show you a little trick here. Um, we could, you know, do this in multiple steps, but I'm going to show you a little trick to do it in one step. We want to get the K by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the 50 over 0 0.04. So I'm going to multiply 20 times. Now remember, reciprocal means that you turn the fraction upside down. I'm going to multiply this side by 0 0.04 over 50. And on this side, I have 50K over 0 0.04. I'm going to multiply that by 0 0.04 over 50. I'm going to change my color here because I really want you to see what I'm doing. And this cancels that, that cancels that. And so we're left with, go back to my black ink, we're left with K equals, and we have to figure out what this is here, 20 times 0 0.04 over 50. And I don't know what it is off the top of my head, so I'm gonna to go to my calculator on my computer. I don't know if it's showing up for you or not. Um, I don't think that it is, but 20 times 0 0.04 and then divided by 50 tells me that K equals 0 0.016, okay? I had to use up a lot of space to find that answer. That K equals 0 0.016. Now that I know that, go back to my share, I am going to redo the problem. Oh, sorry about that, it turned on its side for a minute. I don't have a lot of space left, so I'm gonna kind of give myself a little room right here in the middle of the problem to do my work, okay? So I apologize if that seems a little small to you. They now want us to find F and they tell us that um, M1 is 10, M2 is 20, and D equals 0 0.4. So now we're gonna do F equals, we know that K is 0 0.016 times M1. Again, this is problem number 39 on page 319 for anybody who was uh, wondering. Uh, M1 is 10. M2 is 20, and D is 0 0.4, which we're going to square. 
Now, here's something that you might not see right away, but it um, it's kind of helpful. Um, actually, never mind. I, uh, I thought I saw something that would cancel, but I was off by a decimal place. So we're going to go ahead and multiply this out. So on the top, we have 0 0.016 times 10. And when I multiply by 10, I get 0 0.16 times 20. 0 0.16 times 20 is 3.2. And we're going to divide that by 0 0.4 squared. 0 0.4 squared is 0 0.16. And when we divide that out, we get 20. So this is one that you might want to go back and look at. And the main reason is it's not terribly difficult, but there's a lot of variables there. So the advantage of having this on video is that you'll be able to go back and review it on your own. The next problem I'm going to do is problem number 41. Let me pull that up for you now. This is a word problem, so we're going to have to kind of walk through it together, make sure that we understand what's going on. And it says, go ahead and identify this for you, since many of you might be, you know, screenshotting or printing stuff out, I want you to know what number it is. It says the profit P from selling bicycles is directly proportional to N, the number of bicycles sold. Now this should make sense. Remember, direct variation means that as one thing increases, the other thing increases. So. If the profit increases, that's because the number of bikes that we sold increases. That just makes sense. It's a direct relationship. So P is directly proportional to N. So P profit equals K times N. Pretty straightforward. If the profit from selling eight bicycles is $450, so they're telling us two things. They're telling us the number of bikes that we sold is eight, and they're telling us that the profit from that is 450. Now what this is going to enable us to do is it's going to enable us to find K and K is the amount that he's selling each bike for, whoever this person is. So then they're going to ask us what the profit is from selling 18 bicycles. So let's go ahead and solve this first. We know that 450 equals K times eight. So we're going to divide both sides by eight. When we do that, we get K equals, let me see, I'm going to grab my calculator right here. I don't I could do it in my head, but I don't want to make the mistake. So 450 divided by 8 equals 56.25. So that means that he is selling each bicycle for $56.25. That is his um, that is his sale price. It's a constant. So then it says, how much of a profit will he make if he sells 18 bicycles? So we reset the problem. P equals 56.25N, and now we're going to solve this when N equals 18, which is the given in the problem. So P equals 56.25 times 18. And again, I'm going to pull up my calculator here. 56.25 times 18 equals 1,112 0.5. And of course, in money, it's one thousand twelve dollars and fifty cents. One thousand twelve and fifty cents. That's number forty-one. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at problem number forty-three. And again, um, for those of you who are watching the video, you might skip over the problems that. Uh, you don't need to see and just kind of search your way through the video until you find the ones that you do want to see and that's perfectly fine. There might be some of you who did great on the homework and don't have any need to watch this video. You'll want to watch the second video, which I will get posted probably tomorrow uh, on 6.6. .6. I'm going to try and post it this afternoon. We'll see how things are going um, when I'm done with this video. So now we're going to look at problem number 43, melting an ice cube. The time T for an ice cube to melt is inversely proportional to the temperature. So this should make sense to you. When you're melting an ice cube, if you increase the temperature um, that you're melting it at, the amount of time it takes to melt it is going to go down. And if you decrease the temperature, the amount of time it takes to melt it is going to go up. It's an inverse relationship. And it says the time T is inversely proportional to the temperature, capital T. I don't like it when they use 
upper and lowercase letters of the same type, but they do in this problem. So lowercase t is the uh, time that's inversely proportional to uppercase t, the temperature. So here's our setup. And it says, um, if it takes an ice cube two minutes to melt, so time is two minutes when the temperature is 75, then they wanna know how long it's going to take an ice cube of the same size to melt in 80 degree water. So this is going to be two equals K over 75. We wanna solve for K, so we're gonna multiply both sides by that 75 so that it cancels on the right side. And you get K equals 150. That is your constant of variation. So then we rewrite the problem as T equals 150 over capital T. And then it says, how long will it take an ice cube of the same size to melt in 80 degree water? That is temperature. So T equals 150 over 80. Um, nice little shortcut that you can use for canceling when you're talking about uh, numbers that end in a zero is if there's you know, a, a zero on top and zero on the bottom, you can cross them off because they're multiples of 10. You're canceling out a 10. And when you do that, you're left with 15 over eight. And that is in minutes. And by the way, 15 over eight in minutes is 1.875 minutes. You might have written it as one and seven eighths minutes, and that would be okay as well. The important thing to understand is that you do need to label. In the previous problem, we put a dollar sign for the profit on the bicycles. In this problem, we identify it in terms of minutes. All right, we have three more problems to look at. Hang with me. Let's take a look at problem number 45. Let me pull up a new page. And away we go. All right. So this is problem number 45. It says the distance D that a rock falls when dropped from a cliff varies directly, varies directly, so that's a multiplication, times the square of, I'm sorry, varies directly as the square of time T. So D, the distance, equals K, where there's always a K, it's a direct variation times the square of t. So the square of t would be t to the second power. If a rock falls 64 feet in two seconds, 64 feet is a distance. Two seconds is time. They wanna know how far it will fall in three seconds. So we're gonna solve this thing for k. So 64 equals k times t squared. Now I bet you can do this in your head. t squared, t is two, two squared is four. So I'm skipping a step right there. I want you to know the four came from the two squared. Just trying to help build your um, mathematical confidence there. And now we're going to divide both sides by four, like so. When we do that, we get k equals 16. Okay, constant of variation is 16. So now I'm gonna rewrite the problem d equals 16 t squared and they want to know what is d in other words how far will the rock fall and they tell us that t equals 3. so we plug the 3 in there so that's 16 times t squared t is 3 3 squared is 9 again skipping that same step from the previous uh, example because i want you guys to feel a little more confident with being able to skip a step here and there as you are comfortable. 16 times nine is 144. And that's a distance, folks, so make sure that you identify it in feet. So D equals 144 feet. The question always arises, what if I don't label on a test? What if I write 144, but I don't put feet? On your first test, I'm not gonna penalize you, but I will write in the word feet to remind you. Uh, on second, uh, the next quiz and tests going forward, if you don't label, even if you get the problem right, you will miss one point. Okay, so be aware of that. Uh, it's important that you label things, all right? So that was number 45. Now we're gonna look at number 47. And number 47 is an electrical resistance problem. It says, 
The electrical resistance, R, varies directly as its length and inversely as its cross-sectional area, okay? So directly and inversely, this is a combined variation. So let's start with, uh, oh, first of all, let's write down that it's number 47. It says that R varies directly, so there's a K times its length, L, and then inversely as its cross-sectional area, A. So there's our setup. It then says, they give us this information, if the resistance is 0 0.2, when the length is 200, and the cross-sectional area is 0 0.05 square inches, we just need the numbers right now. So given this information right here, we can find K. So it's gonna be 0 0.2 equals K times 200 divided by 0 0.05. And I'm gonna reinforce that little uh, trick I showed you a little bit ago. I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 200 over 0 0.05. So um, this is going to be 0 0.2 times, and of course you could put that over one if it would help you to think of it as a fraction. The reciprocal of this is 0 0.05 over 200 equals K times 200 over 0 0.05, that's what we had originally, times the reciprocal of that, which is 0 0.05 over 200. And again, the reason that we do that is because that is going to cancel out these values and leave us with K. So K is going to equal, I'm gonna to go to my calculator again because I don't feel like trying to grind that out in my head, 0 0.2 times 0 0.05 divided by 200. And when you do that, you get a really, really tiny number. You get K equals 0 0.00005, okay? Now, there's not a lot of room left on this page in order to show you the uh, rest of the problem. So I'm gonna have to, oh wait, I can, I can lengthen this, good. So I'm gonna move that up. I'm going to do the rest of it now. So I'm going to rewrite the problem. I'm going to rewrite, here first let me do this. Remember the problem was R equals KL over A. So K is 0.00005L over A. And then they ask us to find R when L is 5,000. I'm going to write this over here. L is 5,000 and A is 0 0.01, okay? So R equals 0 0.00005, that's my K, times 5,000 divided by 0 0.01. And we're going to divide that out. I'm gonna pull up my calculator and take that 0 0.00005 times 5,000. And then I'm going to divide that by 0 0.01. And when I do that, I get R equals 25. That's not a bad answer given all that stuff. And by the way, they do tell us in the problem, the resistance is in units called ohms. That is an electrical unit. I'm sure you've heard of volts and watts and things like that. Ohms is another electrical um, unit. So the answer to number 47 is that R equals 25 ohms. One more problem and we will be done with the homework video. Problem number 49, go ahead and get this opened. 
Come on, there we go. Problem number 49 says, the wattage, oh, there we go, wattage. I just mentioned uh, that term. Oops. The wattage rating of an appliance W varies jointly. Now remember jointly means that it's going to be um, uh, multiple variables in a direct relationship. So it says the wattage W varies jointly. So there's my K uh, as the square of the current I, okay, the square of I and the resistance R, all right? So W equals K I squared R. And then they give us the following information. It says if the wattage is six, when the current and the current is the letter I, why do they do that? That's a pain. I is 0 0.2 and R equals 150. So they give us the information uh, to find K. So we're going to plug in those values. W is six. We're trying to find K. I is 0 0.2 and we're going to square it. And R is 150. So six equals K times 0 0.2 squared is going to be 0 0.04 times 150. And I think we're going to see something kind of interesting here. 0 0.04 times 150, if I'm doing it in my head correctly, yep, it equals six. So six equals K times six. So we can do this in our head, K equals one. That's kind of nice. That's going to make our problem a lot easier. Okay, so now give myself the room I need here. We need to find W. We know that K is one. You wouldn't even have to write the one if you didn't want to, but you can. Uh, w equals K times, uh, it says the current is 0 0.3. So that's 0 0.3 squared and the resistance is 100. So this is going to be one times 0 0.3 times 0 0.3 is 0 0.09 times 100. And when you multiply that all out, you get that W equals nine. And again, that is in watts. All right. So that is the homework for section 6.4 in your book, which is on pages 318 and 319. I'm going to post this video right now, and then I will record a lecture over section 6.6 .6 that uh, is more important for you to watch than even the homework video that we just did. So please do make sure that you do that. There's some review in there, and there's some stuff I'm going to teach as if it's new content. So. Uh, I hope that you all have a very safe and happy Labor Day, and I will uh, post the next video here in just a few moments, uh, not in a few moments, in, in a couple hours after I get it done. Um, if you have any questions over any of the homework that I just demonstrated, please feel free to reach out and uh, ask. It's not a problem at all. If I explained something and it wasn't clear enough for you, you need to ask me for clarification. I'm happy to do that. That's, um, you know, that's what I'm here for. That's what they pay me for. That's what you guys pay me for. Remember, I'm working for you. So please don't hesitate if you have any questions. All right. Again, I hope you all have a great day and I